last Sunday night at midnight, uh, plans were released in a, in a very curious press release uh, by a group of clubs in Europe, famous clubs. Uh, they wanted to form a European Super League, and it was delivered as if this was a fait accompli. Uh, Fifteen of the uh, biggest and richest clubs in Europe had decided they would form a Super League. It was a direct attack on the Champions League and on the domestic leagues uh, in England, Spain, Italy, uh, all of uh, whose top clubs had signed up for this. Uh, significantly, Bayern Munich rejected uh, the invitation. Hence, only 12 clubs of the 15 proposed have been identified. However, uh, it's been a fiasco. Uh, and uh, the Glazer family in Manchester, John Henry in Liverpool, the owners, American uh, the, in in those two cases, um, have had to issue uh, what can only be described as grovelling apologies to their fans, to their players, and to their coaches. Nobody knew about this. Uh, the person, uh, most obviously the leader of this, uh, was Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid and the proposed president of the new European Super League. Um, and we're joined now uh, from Spain by Richard Fitzpatrick. Uh, Richard uh, lives in Barcelona. He's an Irish journalist uh, working there and he's a regular contributor to this podcast. Richard, anyone listening to your stories from Barcelona and Madrid about uh, the the state of their clubs, uh, particularly the financial uh, carnage that the um, that overspending and COVID has uh, caused would not be surprised that they would want a European Super League. Um, can you tell us first about Perez? He gave a television interview. He suggested, for example, that young people weren't interested in soccer anymore, uh, and he is still resisting uh, what everyone else has accepted uh, that this is not going to happen and that everyone associated with it is tarnished. Yeah, this guy Florentino Perez, uh, holy, uh, he's some operator. He, he's a mad scientist in, in the in the worst uh, sense of the term. Uh, you, you mentioned it's it's very interesting, his sociological perspectives. He's talking about young people aren't interested in football anymore. They're too distracted with social media and other um, devices. Um, he, he, he actually suggested that we should shorten football games. Um, this is the, yes. the kind of mentality he has. He's, he runs his club without a sporting director, which um, partly explains why they've made so many poor transfers o- over the last uh, 10 or 15 years. And which has contributed to the big debt the club has. Um, he never, uh, over the last three days in defending um, this uh, proposed Super League, um, has uh, apologised or um, explained why the mismanagement of these top clubs has led, led to this situation, that they're so so much in debt and that they need this breakaway league. He, he, he's 74. Uh, what's his background uh, Richard, is he a banker? Yeah, he is f- 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 very interesting background. He he's 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 in he's in the construction game. Um, he's self made uh, billionaire. He 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 bought his construction company in 1983 for a peseta, and he's it now generates 40 billion a year in revenue. Um, he's an extraordinary successful businessman. That's you know part of this story that he he's used to succeeding, getting his own way. Um, he's been yes. president of Real Madrid um, since uh, 2000 with a three-year um, uh, break from 2006 to 2009. Um, but he, he's been extraordinarily successful from a financial perspective at the club and in trophies. They, obviously, in the last decade, they've, they've yes. won four Champions League titles. Um, but uh, he's used to getting his own way. He's surrounded by yes men, and that extends to the media in Spain. Um, it's interesting. Like he, he's definitely leading this project. Um, uh, the, 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 he's the president of this proposed Super League. Um, the company is registered in Spain on Tuesday. He um, uh, rushed through a, a court order in a commercial court here in Spain, um, bl- blocking any. Um, uh, attempts by FIFA or UEFA to um, to 
to stop the progress of this league. So it's all based in in Spain, and that's where his head resides. He's he's used to getting his own way in Spain. Um, it, it was yes. the the silence in in Spain over the last three or four days has been remarkable. Um, the, the, there's been little media criticism of it. Um, none of the players um, or coaches came out um, be, um, in really? the first couple of days. No, they all waited. Uh, there's been a few, Gerard Piquet's come out since, but none of them had the bravery of the likes of um, Milner or even Klopp um, uh, in the UK. Um, so they just towed the line um it, Madrid and Barca have such dominance in the landscape here. Uh, like, for example, in a, in a city like Seville, fourth largest city in Spain, it's a fantastic football culture down there. The, the best city rivalry uh, in the country, you would have to say, if you if you go to the matches between Sevilla and Real Betis. Yet in that city, there are more Real Madrid fans than Betis and Sevilla combined. Yes. Um, so uh, he, uh, Florentino is, is used to getting his own way. Um, so that's why he, he was shocked at the kickback um, globally um, by fans, in, particularly obviously in England. Um, and of course, the cohesion in his his breakaway group wasn't there. He was the only one who came out um, uh, to bat, to, to speak. He was on a radio interview again last night, a long radio interview here in Spain. Um, he's the only one who, who's come out to try and explain their position and he's he's done that very poorly. And what he's still saying, as I understand it, Richard, that this will go ahead, can go ahead, um, and he's not backing down. All the others have backed down uh, with various degrees of graciousness, starting with zero and working <laughs> its way up to about three. Uh, they have been caught badly it, it's a very ill thought out project. A twenty three year contract, uh, no relegation, um, no need to worry about results effectively, um, and J P Morgan giving six billion to kick the dollars to kick the whole thing off. Each of the clubs to get between two hundred million and three hundred million dollars. Um, and of course, uh, the end of the Champions League, and really the end of uh, domestic leagues as well. Uh, so, for somebody who's so successful, um, even leaving aside ethics and values, as a project, it was short of ideas. Uh, it seems to me completely short of ideas. Um, and he didn't um, get his ducks in a row at all. Uh, does that is that explained by what you've described as his um, preeminence uh, and uh, his invincibility in financial terms in Spain? Absolutely, it's uh, like you say he didn't have his ducks in a row. It was half baked. All he had no te- no sponsors lined up, no um, broadcast partner. Um, all he had was a website and lawyers. He he keeps ham- hammering on about uh, the legal aspect. He actually said last night in this radio interview that the other clubs can't pull out, that it's in their contracts. Can you imagine? He, right. he just won't give yeah. up. He believes that it's um, once he's um, squared away uh, legally, he can he can do what he wants. Um, like there's no notion of consulting with the fans. Um, he, he, he was asked about this last night and he said, why would I consult with the fans? Um, I don't consult yeah. with them when I buy players. Um, he, he uh, As we've spoken before on the, on the podcast, Real Madrid is a member-owned club. Um, B- Barca also is a member-owned club. Um, Barca have, um, ha- although their president hasn't come out and spoken about the, the breakaway league, um, the, the, the word from Barca is that they would consult with their members and they would have a vote on whether they would join the Super League. Uh, Florentino is just pushing it through. He, d- he doesn't believe that that's necessary. He, he rules with an absolute iron fist. It was, it was an ex- extraordinary. He, he came back into power in, in 2009 as president. Um, he changed the statutes of the club in 2012. Um, so uh, a president would have to uh, have a bank guarantee of 15% of revenue and be a, a member for 20 years if he wanted to go for election. So he swept through each time unelected. There was a guy who surfaced um, earlier this year, uh, billionaire Enrique um, Riquelme. He's the son of a former uh, 
club director and uh, he's made his the, the family businesses in renewable energy he he raised his head above the parapet suggested that he might run Florentino rushed uh, through on the 2nd of April he just announced it on the club's website that anybody who wanted to run for election would have to do so before uh, uh, April 12th to give them 10 days and Rick, uh, Rick Elmay said there's no way I can uh, run an election campaign in a, in a pandemic like this uh, and, and get the, that money together uh, in that sh- short a span. So Florentino again has gone through for another four years so he he's damaged his image by this move for a Super League but uh, his position at the club is, is, um, is untouchable. Yes, now he claims that the pandemic... Uh, the COVID pandemic has uh, caused uh, this impoverishment that he wants to fix. Uh, and it has clearly, uh, on Barcelona and Real Madrid, uh, the pandemic, the absence of s- support, uh, also their own profligacy with uh, spending too much money on players that aren't quite good enough. Uh, and all of that has contributed. Um, but they're not alone in that. Um, and the I want to ask you about Barcelona, and and I mean, it's it's interesting to know. I mean, the opposition in the UK uh, came from uh, initially um, the Monday night uh, soccer on Sky. Uh, Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher were eloquent, uh, passionate, and angry. Uh, there was no question about it. They were followed by coaches Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, uh, who said, uh, Klopp said he was against it. Um, And Guardiola said, how can you have a league uh, where nobody loses? Uh, How can anyone win? Uh, Which was uh, philosophical, but nevertheless uh, accurate identifying of one of its basic flaws. Uh, And then, of course, the fans um, and the media, nobody came out to support it, literally nobody. So what is different about Spain? Is it the fear of this powerful man? Uh, And what about Barcelona? What about Ronald Koeman? I mean, a distinguished and respected uh, former footballer now as a coach. Uh, What about Messi? What about Piquet Uh, and all these people in Barcelona who are respected throughout the game yeah it's it's a pertinent question um Kuman, you mentioned Kuman. he came out he's a company man he's he said uh, i just think it was tuesday um i want what is best for the club there's a lot of opinion being discussed about this project i don't want to add to it he, he just batted it to touch right it, interestingly he the, the one person he or the one entity he did attack was uefa he said um uefa does a lot of talking but it doesn't listen to the to the players or the coaches we have to play tomorrow night and um, this actually was in reference they're playing tonight on thursday we have to play at 10 o'clock so he's alluding to the uh, you know um all these extra matches that um, yes the, the pressure and he's not the wrong about he's not wrong about about UEFA, uh, because FIFA and UEFA, the governing bodies of football, uh, have a lot to answer for. And no one would, I would think, uh, Richard, would want to defend what we have at the moment. Definitely. Uh, but uh, you can uh, dislike and maybe urge reform on what we have at the moment, but not with this um preposterous idea yeah it, it's it's worth maybe fleshing out how broken football is um maybe, maybe the super league isn't the solution but like uh, the the existing champions league um the pool games are a farce uh they're talking about reforming yep. in 2024 that's adding more clubs more games almost doubling the number yes. of games um for example like Two years ago, in 2019, Barca got to the semi-final that year. They lost infamously at Anfield 4-0. Ajax were on the other side of the draw. They got to semi-final, a brilliant team. But Ajax got uh, half the the, um, the revenue that season from the Champions League that Barca did. The game is rigged. Um, so, yes. uh, and it, it seeps down then into the domestic leagues. Um, 
all look all over Europe. Juventus last year won their ninth Serie A title. Bayern Munich yes. in a couple of days, in a few days, will win their ninth Bundesliga title in a row. Um, yes. The French league is obviously one horse race. Like we, yeah. we might think the English Premier League is is competitive, but Man City are winning that title with a hundred points. What are they going to be yes. like next season with a number nine? Um, the, the the CIES uh, um, uh, a body that um, an economics body in, in Europe they released uh, the squad values of the top clubs in Europe um, on Monday. Um, Re- Man City's squad is 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 worth one point three billion. Real Madrid's is worth eight hundred and forty million. That's the problem that Florentino Perez has yes. um, and Barca. They they can't compete anymore with the likes of Man City and PSG. Uh, they're talking about uh, the pandemic being the cause of this situation. The pandemic has exposed fault lines um, in, yes. in the game and in, in how it's run financially. They talk about the, Florentino on this uh, TV interview he did on Monday night. He kept going on about how we're here to save uh, football. Um, and about the uh, the debt that is there, they they can't afford to buy new players, and that they can't afford to be com- they can't be competitive anymore. There, there's nothing wrong with the with the game of football. It doesn't need that much money to run. Um, last season, um, the top twenty clubs lost about a billion, about twelve percent of their annual revenue. Even still, if they halved what they have, what they got last season, they were back. To, they would be back to what they were earning in the 20, 2009 twenty ten season, when all those t- top clubs had plenty of money. It would mean, in in ball terms, that the likes of Messi, instead of getting one hundred and twenty seven million a year, he'd get fifty million a year. Um, yeah. They don't need much money to run their clubs. Uh, they could so- sort their debt problem by selling players, uh, getting them off their wage bill. Um, uh, but the, but the Man City and the PSGs would just pull further away. So that's that's the kind of problems these big clubs are faced with. Yes, and isn't the problem for uh, the game in Spain in general is the imbalance. I mean, they don't have um, a television deal uh, as the Premier League has, for example, that would um, dis- dispose the profit or the money uh, more or less. Uh, with some degree of equity, um, and uh, they don't have that in Spain. Am I right? Uh, what they did it was very interesting. The the, the league president here is a really uh, powerful figure, and he's the only body, he's the only guy in this country who can stand up to Florentino Perez. He he managed to get the Spanish um, government to put past legislation in about 2015. Um, that would provide for more equitable distribution yeah. of TV money. So he got that enshrined, but it's still not um, like in in American sports. In basketball, for example, the top club would get about twice what the bottom club gets in TV yes. income. Uh, in Spain, it's still like about twelve or fifteen to one um, by right. a factor that the top clubs um, they still um, dominate the the TV income but the the TV income is is one of the problems that uh, Florentino is flagging Um, the Chinese pulled out of their TV deal with the English Premier League last September Uh, the the money is drying up there the the winners of the Chinese Super League um, are going out of business at the end of this season um, so, uh, but France had to uh, lost their uh, TV rights uh, deal with Media Pro. They, yeah. they cobbled together a four month deal with Canal Plus. Um, so the, the TV money is is uh, disappearing, and that's why Florentino talks about all oh, the young people aren't interested in in football um, anymore. So they they want to figure out what's the, what's the next move. Where do they go for? Um, their next uh, kind of big revenue stream. What's mind-boggling about it, Richard, is the stupidity of the idea. I mean, it's just ridiculous. There was no... Uh, it was supposed to start in season 24-25, but, I mean, they would... They had what they called the founders. This would be the 15 founding clubs. Now, the founders could not leave that league. It was there forever. It was a midweek league. Uh, it would destroy, obviously, the Champions League, the Europa League. Uh, it would also seriously damage uh, the domestic leagues, the Premier League, as well, because of the demands uh, on players. 
the um, public in Spain the, 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 and the press, are they just cowed and subdued uh, and accepting of this? And what do they make of the, if they make anything, of the passionate resistance of the English game? Yeah, it was very disappointing to observe um, the, the, the the reporting mainly in the Spanish press over the last few days has been about um, the revolts in England by the Chelsea fans and that the uh, the protesting, yes. um, and about the the top players and coaches who came out against it. Um, there there wasn't that um, that surge here in 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 Barcelona or or in the city of Madrid. Um, there was no like I remember last summer um, when the Messi transfer saga was was um, was running for ten days. There was fans even during the the pandemic. They were outside the stadium um, picketing it. You didn't get that uh, breakout here this time. At Mundo Deportivo, the, the, um, which is the, the longest running sports daily paper here in Barcelona, um, on Tuesday their front cover was three hundred and fifty million euro now. That was their perspective. This is a bonanza for for us. It's going to save yes. the club. That was the narrative. Um, Flor- right. Florentino Perez and the Real Madrid fans uh, were even more cowed, or they, they just followed Florentino's lead. I mean, this is a guy who was who was no regard for the traditions of football. He's he's a guy who who stole Spain's coach twenty four hours before the World Cup started in Russia. Yes, um, he he just uh, you know. Um, looks at the numbers and talks to his lawyers and and that he d- he doesn't uh, care about uh, football fans and uh, uh, centuries uh, century old traditions has he lost face um with the disappearance of his allies because um being no doubt I'm not I'm sure you're not Richard but uh, there's no way the glazers or, or indeed Fenway sports uh who own Liverpool uh, will be going anywhere near uh, an idea like this for a very long time. Yeah, he, this is what he spoke about last night in that radio interview. He said one of the English clubs got cold feet, um, one of the Americans, and then it became contagious. That's why they've backed away. Um, so the, he, his, he, he's, he, he's adamant that um, this league will ha- will happen. But it's very hard to see how he can resurrect it now because um, they've um, the other clubs have run scared. There, there just isn't that cohesion. There was three main runners in this. It was uh, Real Madrid, uh, Manchester United, and um, Juventus. And uh, the like, I mean, Barca, for example, they they just cut and paste um, uh, Flor- uh, the Real Madrid statement and just took out Florentino Perez quotes um, right. for their announcement uh, on Monday. So there's no appetite at uh, at the club to, to to go to war over this. Um, ideologically, uh, the bar the new Barca president has said before he would be against the Super League, but they're over barrel because of their um, their debt problems. Um, so where does the game in Spain go from here? The uh, pandemic is not um, receding at a pace, if it's receding at all, Richard. Um, uh, what is the situation with the COVID pandemic in Spain right now? Uh, it, it, uh, they're s- slowly ticking up towards a fourth wave. The r- vaccine rollout is similar to the other EU countries. Um, it, it, football fans won't get back into the stadiums and if they do until n- next season. Um, uh, the, it, Barca are an immediate pearl. They, they need to um, make uh, debt payments of 266 million by the the end of June. They have to renegotiate Leo Messi's contract if they want to keep him at the club. La Liga say they have to drop their salary um, base by 42 percent for next season. So they need uh, to to do a fire sale essentially to preserve themselves, or they renegotiate their debt and that gets them into to difficult uh, waters. Um, we saw a couple of years ago how, how Mil- Milan was taken over by a hedge fund owner because the, uh, the previous owner failed to make a, a loan repayment of 35 million. Um, so uh, Barca's outlook is 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 not uh, is, is not pleasant. Now to the uh, responsibility of uh, UEFA, who are the governing body, um, they really 
need to punish Real Madrid and Barcelona severely. Many of us believe. That, it, yeah, I can't see that happening. Uh, Florentino says he's uh, right. he's uh, st- still battling with them. Um, I'm, sh- I'm, sh- I'm sure that, uh, Seferin has come out of this uh, emboldened. Yes, he handled it very well. I mean, he came out immediately. He said, these people are spitting in the face of football fans. Uh, and he called them snakes. He was particularly... Uh, um, exercised, uh, shall we say, by Agnelli, the Juventus president, that's a family, the Fiat uh, car family who have been in football for many decades and his father was a very respected man in football. Um, They um, are uh, really, they have shamed the sport and they have shamed the history of their clubs and it's very notable, Richard, in the statements by Joe Glazer yesterday and by John Henry, the Liverpool, uh, their apologies were um, complete. They were groveling and asking to be forgiven for uh, the the disruption they caused. Um, and they ain't going back to where Florentino is. Yeah, but I don't think like Florentino, it, it won't trouble him. Like he, he'll be at a personal level, he'd be disappointed because of the, the loss of face. But the likes of UEFA, he won't run scared from them. He, the uh, UEFA showed how, how powerful or powerless they were last season when they um, they ran for the hills once Man City's lawyers came after them and they rolled back on that two year ban from the Champions this League. This is over the football fair play provisions, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, it, like, it, what, what, what people are saying is that uh, this will be a bonanza for the likes of PSG, that UEFA now will adjust their financial fair play rules, that the big clubs, they, they, they still hold the power, these, um, this, the, yeah, the Super Fifteen, let's call them, and um, that you, you mentioned at the top, including PSG and Bayern Munich, um, that uh, they will be able to renegotiate uh, with uh, the UEFA's uh, proposed reform of the Champions League. Um, that reform, which is supposed to start in in 2024 season, has a place for two has two VIP places. Um, so, f- yes, for example, the likes of yeah. Arsenal and Liverpool would get through next season, even though they're sixth and ninth in the league yeah, table at the moment. Right. We haven't turned our attention to uh, the UEFA reforms. I think the press release at midnight uh, on Sunday, I think was designed to uh, thwart uh, UEFA's press conference on Monday, at which they were uh, bound or, or had said they would announce the new formula or the new format for the, the Champions League. Just listening to you talking, Richard, it seems to me uh, that it's even more important now that uh, Florentino Perez uh, is punished, his club is punished, uh, and that Barcelona equally must be punished, and the others who were involved in this. We cannot have a 74-year-old billionaire telling us that we must have shorter games and speaking or purporting to speak for a younger for a young gener- a generation of young people this is absolutely absurd yeah it's 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 so demoralizing um i like uefa may uh, b- b- uh, roll out some sanctions but i, I don't i re- really don't see it happening maybe a, a right. slap on the wrist some kind of yes. fine or something or they they'll adjust their reforms maybe because of the the people power that's been on display over the last few days they'll for example they'll adjust this uh the two spots they've allocated f- for vip clubs um maybe right. they, they won't uh, uh roll roll with that let's see but um the 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 the, the, pr- the problems at like the problems in the governance of football are so um uh broken and um yes at the moment it's it, it 
like what needs to happen is a redistribution of wealth. So we have a competitive European Cup like we had in the 70s and 80s when you had clubs like Stoa Bucharest and Porto um, yes. um, or, or Celtic further back uh, winning the European yes. Cup. That's not possible because um, uh, the, the rich clubs keep getting richer and the, the, they just get keep getting further and further away from the pack. Um, so this, this new the new uh, Swiss model they're talking about this new Champions League format with uh, like uh, two an, an extra hundred games um, a bloated uh, version of yeah. the existing tournament like we're, we're all fed up with these group games meaningless yes. group games and uh, Florentino Perez has some reason in, in saying that fa- fans don't want to watch those games he's he's arguing they want to watch the best teams play each other every week but that that would have its own problems we'd get uh, tired of that as well after a while um so it's difficult to see how they can how they can um solve this problem um you like the government's uh, in theory could step in but english clubs aren't in the european union anymore so how do you legislate there um and we yes. know anyway politicians get populist and on these issues but they, yes, they, indeed. they, they don't really know um what's best for the game in conclusion, Richard, I think we have to point out, uh, given that uh, Florentino wouldn't like to listen to this conversation, that Real Madrid uh, have been uh, hugely successful. The most successful club in Europe, arguably, uh, in the, the last five years, they've won the Champions League three times in a row uh, in that time span. They've won it 13 times, I think. Correct. Uh I'm right in saying, uh, in their history, they are a glorious club with a glorious history. Um, and um, one has to think that uh, the gap between British game and the Germans, uh, Bayern Munich and Dortmund, both refused to have anything to do with this, between Spain and the others is, is rather large. And Florentino is sitting in the middle. Yeah, you're right to flag. I mean, Real Madrid have been amazing. It's incredible. They're due to play uh, Chelsea next week now in the Champions League semi final. It's their 30th time at the semi final stage. I think Chelsea have only been in it three or maybe four times. You know, they've been the. Uh, the kings of Europe for for sixty years, and Florentino yes. in his his rhetoric and his dreams, uh, he's he's been talking about this Champions League. Uh, going back uh, publicly, at least uh, over t- ten or twelve years, he 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 he's, he talks about Real Madrid's position as um, uh, an innovator in football. They were the only club, um, and uh, as a founder member of FIFA back in nineteen oh four. Uh, Real Madrid, along with L'Equipe, were the founders of uh, the European right. Cup in 1955. So he's saying, yes. we, we, you know, football and society changes. This is the ne- next leap forward. Um, that's his his thinking. So that's why he's after the Super League. Um, but they've been, uh, their image around Europe has been really tarnished uh, as a result of this. Uh, um, I, I don't know, it's like a Bay of Pigs invasion. It is. It's a coup. A failed coup at the moment. Richard, we're very grateful to you for joining us from Barcelona. Hope that your presence on this podcast doesn't lead uh, to um, uh, a witch hunt from Florentina Perez, the president of Real Madrid. Uh, We're grateful to you. Nevertheless, Richard Fitzpatrick joining us there from Barcelona. Uh, We're grateful to Richard, to you for listening. Uh, 